Well guys, I'm finally back from CES 2018 in Las Vegas, and let me tell you, it's amazing what you miss when you're away from home. Welcome back to Craft Computing. As always, I'm Jeff. In this build video, you're gonna recognize the motherboard and possibly CPU if you've been following my channel for some time. In my average gamer PC, I mentioned that I had purchased an ATX X79 motherboard for a project that had kind of fallen by the wayside. Today, I finally get to dig into that. I began researching these Chinese knockoff motherboards around April of last year. At the time, I really wasn't looking at building a gaming rig. My focus was to upgrade my desperately out of date home server and NAS box. I'm gonna tell you that as an IT professional, I'm a bit ashamed of what I'm about to show you. This is my home server as it exists today. The Thermaltake case it's in is from 2006 and has seen a couple different motherboards and CPUs over the years. Most recently, it's been rocking a Xeon X3350 quad core running at 2.66 gigahertz. This bad boy sports six megabytes of L2 cache and a 95 watt power draw at full tilt and was originally launched in quarter one of 2008. You may know it a little bit better by its consumer name, the Core 2 Quad Q9400. Helping this thing chug along for honestly the better part of a decade has been eight gigabytes of Kingston DDR2 and four two terabyte 7200 RPM SAS drives connected to an HP P410 RAID card with one gigabyte of battery backed cache. These drives are running in a RAID 5. Now, whoa, whoa, whoa. Before my armchair server managers chime in, yes, I am aware of the dangers of running such a large RAID 5 array. This was the best combination of storage and speed the last time I upgraded my storage, and I always keep good backups. And my OS is on a single SSD, not connected to the RAID controller. Everything's gonna be fine, calm down. Now, my server's been primarily running as a NAS for the last number of years, but lately it's struggling to even transcode Plex on my local network. And with two kids under five, my wife holds me to a very strict 30 minute response time to any and all outages. So what's the plan for today? Well, I've got this B Yang, or Qnon, I'm actually not sure which, X79 motherboard that I actually purchased from Amazon for about $130. Unlike the previous micro ITX board, this one came in a retail box, reads as a genuine X79 chipset, supports quad channel memory, as well as PCI Express 3.0. Replacing the old and decrepit X3350 is an E5 2650 Xeon eight core 16 thread chip running at two gigahertz, along with four eight gigabyte six of Samsung DDR3 ECC memory running at 1333. Keeping the chip cool will be an Arctic Alpine 20 Plus with a 92 millimeter PWM fan. An overview and kind of lightning review of this motherboard shows marked improvements over other knockoffs that I've seen. Construction materials are okay for the price and feature set, but the board does have more flex than I'm used to seeing. VRM heat sinks are a welcome addition to my previous experience, as are multiple PWM fan headers. There's a few things I'm not liking though. First off, this board claims to support both SLI and Crossfire, but I've been unable to find any evidence that SLI is actually supported. I'm sure Crossfire is because all you need is enough slots to plug your cards in, but SLI is another beast entirely. Secondly, while the board is technically ATX, it's kind of an odd size. It's kind of this weird middle ground between micro ATX and standard ATX. It's slightly taller than a micro ATX board, but it doesn't quite reach the bottom standoffs in a case for a full ATX board. Depending on your case and the location of your standoffs, you may have difficulty getting this thing properly secured. But I've got high hopes for this board, and I'm sure at this point you're kind of sick of hearing me talk about it, so let's just get the thing installed.
All right, that actually went pretty smoothly. The old board came right out with no difficulties and the Biang X79 went right in and actually booted directly to the OS with no issues to speak of. Currently I'm running Windows on this box, but if you guys are interested, I may walk you through a migration to FreeNAS as well as a transition off of my RAID 5 and into ZFS. I'm also planning on running a number of virtual machines to make my home life more enjoyable. Things like network-wide ad blocking, Plex, and other services. Draw me a comment if you'd like to see these projects or possibly even tutorials. If there's enough interest, I will definitely make those happen. So I know you guys are dying to know, was this upgrade worth it? Guys, I was running a 10-year-old quad-core Xeon as a media server. Hell yes, this was worth it. I went from four processing threads to 16. I have four times the amount of memory and Plex no longer stutters when transcoding. But I know you guys are all about the benchmarks. So how did the X3350 handle Cinebench? Well, it actually scored a 280, multi-threaded. Meanwhile, the E5 2650 managed an 843. Not world beating numbers, but certainly enough to keep in my closet and keep my network files accessible and keep my wife and kids off my back when Plex just sits there and spools. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this one. I know this is more of an overview of my home server rather than the Biang motherboard, but I will definitely update you on my experience as I get more time with this. The only thing I've done with this board so far has been my average gamers build so many months ago. Drop me a like and make sure to subscribe if you're not already. If you wanna purchase this motherboard or anything else listed in the video, I put links down in the video description, along with my Amazon affiliate link. Every dollar you spend on Amazon could help support this channel and every dollar I make right now is going right back into content. So thank you everyone for your support on that. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Oh, it's so good to be home. This teleprompter keeps me on track. It's only 11.10. I got all evening to finish this beer and maybe have another one. Not really, I, I work in the morning. Oh, even I have limits, guys. Gosh, slave drivers, take your medicine. No.